So welcome back to another weekly broadcast from Franchise Voice Box, Franchising Stories from Asia. My name is Robert Bosley, and I have with me today Mr. Sean No, the CEO and co-founder of VF Franchise Consulting. Recently, Sean and I have been discussing uh, various countries around Asia. And for this week's program, we're going to focus on Singapore, one of the most developed countries in Southeast Asia. Now, I mean, Singapore is quite a small country in both landmass and its 5.5 million population. However, it ranks fourth in the world and number one in Asia for PPP, the purchasing power parity, and actually 12th in the world for GDP per capita. So basically this indicates that the population has a high amount of discretionary uh, income available. One last fact that I would like to share is that it's actually uh, ranked in the top five easiest countries to do business in. And you know, I think it's just one of the most attractive markets in our region. Um, but Sean, what do you think? You're the expert. What would you say that the five, the top five reasons to franchise in Singapore? Well, it's nice to chat with you again, Robert. I uh, hope things are going well. And, um, you know, Singapore is a quite unique uh, place. Uh, you know, I'm based in Vietnam and uh, I do go to Singapore quite often. And sometimes I visit the market with my family and I know that they enjoy uh, all the fun things that they can do in, in a place like Singapore. So anytime we're in Singapore, it doesn't feel like an Asian country. It feels like, uh, you know, it's a Western country that you could be going to Los Angeles or uh, Vancouver, British, you know, British Columbia and Canada, et cetera. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great place. And, and like you said, you know, I think um, the World Bank has ranked Singapore as the best place for doing business for 10 consecutive years. That says a lot, not only for 10 years, but for every single year for the last 10 years, uh, no, no, no small feat there. And, and uh, you know, a lot of times when companies look at Singapore, they look at, as, at Singapore as being a strategic market that they want to enter in order to get the visibility uh, that they want for their specific uh, business or franchises or licenses. Uh, and it's often seen as a beachhead market that can help bring these franchises into other Asian markets, whether that, whether that means expansion further into Malaysia and the rest of Southeast Asia, like Thailand, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, or it could also even potentially mean an entry into mainland China. So, um, you know, there, there is a good reason why beyond just, you know, the having a flagship in marketing, uh, you know, uh, business uh, in Singapore that is uh, highly visible, uh, it does serve as a benchmark uh, that potentially allows them to enter many other markets. And another reason why I think Singapore uh, has captured the interest of many franchisors internationally uh, is the fact that it is one of the most developed uh, you know, franchise industries in Asia uh, with over 600 different franchises uh, and well over 35,000 franchisees. Now, you know, that in itself is not huge, but when you look at a population of 5.5 million people, it does put things into perspective. Uh, it, is, it is very developed. Uh, it is very efficient. Uh, and a lot of the things that you would want uh, you know, from equipment supplier to uh, a strong labor force or modern retail locations, uh, Singapore kind of fits all of those criteria. Uh, and, and maybe going back again to uh, the wealth of the nation, you know, we hear a lot about um, incomes in Singapore and really the medium income in Singapore is about 3,500 Singapore dollars. Uh, and, and that's quite high for uh, within Asia. Now, the average income in Singapore is even much more impressive. It stands at 6,500 Singaporean dollars. And a lot of times what we hear is the average uh, Singaporean income. Uh, and why the difference between the two? Well, the difference is really 
um, in, in terms of the groups uh, within Singapore, because what we have is some of the groups are making very, very high incomes uh, and the rest are making good incomes, but not quite as high. And so that's why you tend to see basically uh, a higher average versus a median income in Singapore. Regardless, it is a very sizable marketplace with uh, almost everybody being able to afford many different products and services uh, that you normally find uh, you know, in any country. Uh, and I guess one more thing is, uh, and you alluded to this, is Singapore's legal framework. It is based on English common law. Uh, it has uh, the best IP protection uh, system in Asia, bar none. Yeah. Uh, and that's very important for very you know, established brands that want to bring their businesses to places like Singapore to ensure that they have the protection of uh, intellectual property and trademark uh, laws uh, in place. So, uh, you know, again, just a wonderful and easy place to doing business. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons that I didn't think of. So, um, you know, the next question that I wanna ask you is what specific franchise sectors, you know, do you think would be the most attractive uh, for the Singapore market, you know, and, and why? Well, you know, with Singapore, it's a little bit more challenging uh, with this because, and the reason is because Singapore is such a developed uh, franchise market and consumers are very demanding uh, in terms of what brands that, that they seek uh, that aren't already there, what services that that uh, they seek that aren't already there. So, so typically what you find is uh, investors and franchisees uh, are really looking for branded and iconic brands uh, that are outside of Singapore to come to Singapore. Now that could be an iconic brand like Coca or Mango Tree from Thailand that uh, could potentially enter uh, or has already entered uh, places like Singapore. So again, it's, um, it's really about being very selective and choosy uh, in terms of what brands uh, would bring enough interest from investors and franchisees. Now, in terms of sectors, uh, again, they, they cross all different types of sectors because every franchise sector in, in Singapore uh, is appropriate, whether it's in food and beverage, uh, whether it is in education. And certainly food and beverage and education are very uh, high in the list uh, as, is, as it is in, in, in basically almost every country. Uh, because we do like to enjoy our time uh, with friends and families, as well as, uh, you know, uh, having a, a society that really focuses on education as, as a, a, a pathway for their children to have a better life uh, and future, right? So, so those things are, have always been important, but even retail and having branded retail brands is extremely important uh, in a country where consumers, again, uh, are expecting branded products and services, uh, as well as fitness and health uh, and entertainment uh, in various segments. And, and I think what, what, what makes Singapore a little bit unique more so than other markets uh, is the fact that um, you know, they, do, uh, they do face higher rental costs they do yeah. have higher labor costs. <clears throat> so if you are a brand that wants to bring your business uh, into Singapore, you have to be cognizant of that. And by having a, a flexible store format uh, with different sizes, uh, you know, you may have a flagship that's a little bit bigger, but you may also have smaller kiosks or trucks, uh, you know, that uh, are more appropriate uh, in certain venues. Uh, certainly having the flexibility in size and formats will help you greatly, uh, not only to attract investors in Singapore, but also to execute and to make it successful uh, in this island nation. So thanks for that information, Sean. Um, you know, the last question that I have for you uh, really is, uh, do you have any interesting news, uh, franchising news that has come out of Singapore recently? Uh, you know, that you can share with the, our listeners today? No, that's a great question, Robert. Um, 
you know, Singapore is, as a, an island nation, has one of the highest foreign direct investment rates uh, in Asia, right? So every year it's a powerhouse when it comes to the FDI. So there's lots of news from that perspective. Uh, of course, on this channel, uh, we like to focus on the franchising aspect. And, and really, um, you know, what we find is going back to that iconic theme, uh, you know, brand iconic brands like Shake Shack uh, or Five Guys Burgers, uh, both from the U.S., uh, have found their way into Singapore. And they have found their way into Singapore sooner than in most other markets in Asia. And so uh, there's a reason for that because f Singapore is often seen as a flagship destination for a brand to make a lot of noise, uh, given the, the location of Singapore and the fact that it serves as a bridge uh, between both Western and uh, Eastern cultures. Uh, and the fact is every Singaporean speaks English in addition to other languages. And mm -hmm. so there are many, many advantages like that for these types of brands. Now that said, does it stop with Shake Shack? Does it stop with Five Guys? Absolutely not. Every year you should expect to see iconic brands, not only from the US, but from China, from Hong Kong, from Japan, from Korea, from Taiwan, from Thailand. You know, and, and hopefully someday from Vietnam as well, iconic brands that are able to make a big splash into Singapore with the idea of then expanding to other markets over time. One day we'll get a Canadian brand into Singapore. <laughs> I know it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Maybe, so, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Tim Hortons. Thank you very much, Sean, for the informative and, and interesting information that you shared with us today. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. You know, Singapore is many brands' first entry into the ASEAN marketplace, and there's a very good reason uh, for all of the things that Sean uh, shared with us today. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss next week's episode of Franchise Voice Box. You can see the latest franchise brands that are available for Singapore and other areas around the region at our website, vffranchiseconsulting.com, or please feel free to email us at any time, info at vffranchiseconsulting.com for more information or for franchising sales or other consulting services for Asia. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Thank you, Robert.